Welcome to Excel and Finance video number 36. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, chapter 5, click on the link below the video and be sure to scroll way down to the finance class section. Hey, in this video here, last video we did PMT, just a basic loan payment, but here we want to look at all the intricacies. We want to look at annuity due, annuity begin, what happens to the interest rate when points occur, what happens when you delay your payments, balloon payments all in one video. So really we're going to learn about a lot more about the PMT function. Now here's our situation. We borrow this amount. We have a down payment. So our loan would be that amount minus this. We have an interest rate monthly. So we have to convert the annual to period. We're, we have a loan for five years, so we better figure out what all the to the months are, total period, so that year times 12. Now we come over here and we do our PMT. Now we're going to do in the, uh, the first example at the end, and what happens if you pay right at the beginning? What's the difference in payment? So end is called an ordinary annuity, begin is called an annuity due. Oh, we can use our PMT function. The rate, that's always period rate. The NPR, total number of periods. Present value, this is a positive coming into our pockets because when we borrow it, the bank gives it to us. Bank, negative cash flow, you positive, even if you immediately give it to uh, the someone else. All right, we don't need these last two arguments because type, we'll see here, uh, by default it's an end annuity, so we can leave it out. So there is our payment given end. Now let's do begin equals PMT, period rate, R-A-T-E, N-P-E-R is total number of periods. Present value, we're going to have that same positive amount comma to skip the future value, and then comma, now we need a 1 to indicate begin or annuity due. So for this small loan, it doesn't make a big difference, but we're going to be saving uh, a little bit each payment by deciding to do it at the begin instead of the end. Now, uh, what about the lender's point of view? This is all us, right? It's a minus to us, but that's us paying the bank. Let's just do a PMT from the point of view of the bank equals PMT. The rate, the banker has to use the same rate. Banker has to use the same NPER. Present value is the only difference. On the day that they give out the loan, it's a subtraction to them, right? So that's the only difference. It just comes up positive. Here it's positive because guess what? When you pay it, they get it as a positive. For us, it's a negative. Next scenario we want to look at. There's something wrong with the formatting. I just. Hey, a balloon payment. What's a balloon payment? That's when you have a loan contract and you, you make a monthly payment, and then at the end, you owe some lump sum. So PMT is great for this. Equals PMT function, the rate. It's going to be our period rate, comma, the total number of periods. This loan is for three years at 12 months, so it's 36 months, comma, the present value. It's still going to be positive, and here's our loan amount, comma, and future value. There's some amount left over after we make all of our payments. The future value is going to have to be negative because remember, PMT to us is we're paying it out of our pocket, boom, boom, every month. But so is this amount at the end. We're going to pay that to the um, bank. And actually, on the last day, you'll pay this amount and the payment. Again, type, we're, we don't have to put that in. We're going to um, do it as an, an end annuity or ordinary annuity. So there it is. If we put zero here, it'll go ahead and calculate it. It'll say uh, that's our monthly payment. So if we have no lump sum at the end, then we have uh, 1,354. If I control, control Z, we have a lump payment at the end. Then we're going to pay a little bit uh, uh, less each month, but a big chunk at the end. 
All right, see there's that formatting messed up. In 2010, it's like a bug. If I scroll it up and scroll it down, it shows it again. All right, now this is a different situation. We're going to, uh, corporation, we're going to go borrow a million bucks. Uh, there's our period rate, our total number of periods. But we're going to delay our payments. So in essence, we're not going to pay anything for one year. And then ultimately, we need to figure out what the payment is. Well, this is all cash flows and all interest or discount rates if you're doing uh, present value. The million bucks, you borrow it. It's sitting in the account. And since we're doing it uh, periods per year or quarterly, each quarter they're going to add the interest in, even though you haven't paid anything. So the first trick is to do future value. So I'm going to say, hey, what's the future value? All right, now the first thing is we need our rate. Now I want to look over here. We have annual rate, and we have four periods per year. So this is compounding quarterly. We also have six years for this loan. All right, so the rate, it's that one. We already calculated it. I already did the formula, of this divided by that, comma. Now NPER, I want to think smartly here about how we make this. Since this is a template here, notice it says one year here. But what if we changed it to two? All right, so the future value is going to grow. For us, it's one year here. So just thinking simply, well, there's four periods per year. But what if I put a two there? What would it be? It would be eight. So for an NPER for the future value, I'm going to say number of compounding periods times whatever I put in this cell. Right? right now, it gives us four. If I put a two here, it'll be eight. Comma. We don't have a payment, um, but we do have a present value. And that present value is positive. We borrowed it. It comes into our pocket. All right, And type, we don't need that here. It's not an annuity. It's just a lump sum calculation. All right, so that means after one year, my heavens, we have $87,000 of accrued interest. All right, now we can do our PMT. And there's two things. One is the present value is no longer this. It's this. In addition, on that point, when we put this amount into our PMT, it's actually positive, right? Because the way this worked is it assumed we uh, had a positive amount here, so we owe it on this day. But again, we did owe it on this day. But we're going to dump it back in as, as if it comes back into our pocket. The second thing to notice is how many periods do we have left? Well, there's six years, and we've already used four of them. So we certainly can't use this number. I'm going to suggest we say, oh, six years, all the years minus the number of years we put it off. Right now, it'll give us five if we do that times this. So we're never, ever going to use this cell in this calculation. All right, you ready? Equals PMT. The rate, we have our period rate, comma, NPER. Now remember, we don't want to just type five times four. We want to say open parentheses all of our years minus the years we're putting it off. And that subtraction has to be forced first. So we put it in parentheses times number of periods. Whew, no, that's NPER. All right, present value. Again, we're going to have to make this positive because it's as if we, re we are getting a new loan. So I'm going to put a negative here. Uh, we do not have a balloon payment at the end, and the type is N, so we just close parentheses. And there we have it. That is with um, putting it off for one year, and also building a pretty cool template, because if I change this to two, boom, it all updates perfectly. Now, we did this in two steps, right? I'm actually going to put this as one. We did it in two steps, which is perfectly all right. If you didn't want to do it in two steps, notice this cell is C34, and we use C34 right there. So you could copy that whole future value function and paste it right there. So if you're, you know, if you're building this and it's confusing, you build it in two steps, but then you can mash the two formulas together. So and it would look something like that. All I did was copy it from that cell and put it right there like that. All right, one last um, loan payment financial calculation we want to look at. I don't have a label here. This is uh, 
adjusted APR when there are points and fees. See, finance people all the time try to do lots of tricks, even if they're not doing tricks. There's lots of things going on in the contract that sometimes are hard to see through. So you're quoted this rate at 5%. But there's some points. And usually you see points as this. right? I wrote it as 0 0.01 because we're going to use it in a calculation. And there's fees. So what do they do? You borrow 200 k but they take out 1%. And they uh, take out a fee of 750. So really, the cash you get into your pocket is not 200k. On the face of the loan, they're going to use that amount for your PMT. So you see here, on the face of the loan, the present value is that. But you didn't get to keep all that cash. They took some out. So the amount you gave to the person you bought the house for, or whatever you use the cash for, is less than that 200k. So that's the the, the idea behind this. Once we know the actual cash we got to use, then we can figure out the actual interest rate. All right, so cash we used equals 200,000. And I'm going to go, I know 0.1, I can do it in my mind. So 200K times 0.99 gives me the that part of the cash. So I'm going to say, instead of 0.99, how do we get 0.99? In parentheses, 1 minus this. And then we also have to subtract from that 750. So this part, if I highlight it and hit the F9 key just to show you, that shows you the minus 1%. And then from that, we can just subtract that 750. Now, I hit the F9 key. I'm going to hit Control-Z. I just wanted to show you what that part of the formula was doing. There you go. And you know, what can I say? Most of us are signing mortgages um, that have those kind of fees that are hidden a little bit. Uh, you know, most of the contracts will show you adjusted APR, but you know, when they're advertising and most of us are just thinking, looking at this. So now let's figure out the real rate and it's higher, right? Because you have less cash to use, same amount of cash going out of your pocket uh, based on that. So here we go. What function do we use to calculate period rate? The rate function. NPER, total number of periods. Well, we still have um, oh, there it is. Boop. Total number of periods. Comma, the PMT, we've already calculated it based on the PMT, and it is a minus out of your pocket. Comma, present value, it is a positive because you borrowed it and it coming, coming into your pocket. Notice that when you're doing these uh, functions and there's two cash flows, one has to be positive and one has to be negative. The future value, we do not have a um, lump sum balloon payment at the end. Type, it is end. And guess, uh, unless you have some extreme value, um, and because the function is iterating to calculate it, um, and we don't have an extreme value, we don't need to put in a guess, but you could. You could just guess what, what rate it would be close to. And you'd put like 5. Or actually, you'd put the, the period interest rate that you'd already calculated up here. Now, I'm going to actually get rid of the formatting. Or maybe instead, I will hold Control and hot click on that cell and that cell right there. And I want to increase the, the decimals. All right, so the period rate you can see is a little bit higher. But what I really want is adjusted APR. So what do we have to do? Put this into edit mode. In fact, why don't I do this? Why don't I? copy this down and I'm going to type because uh, that is the period rate and then here I'm going to get my copy the formatting button and and now I can go equals this times our number of compounding periods that's all the way over here so adjusted APR is 5.12 so you can see it's a little bit bigger so those fees points fees etc um, actually have an effect. All right, so that's a lot about loan payments. Right? We did adjusted APR. We did a delayed uh, payment. We did uh, a balloon payment. We did it from the lender's point of view, and we did an uh, annuity, uh, ordinary annuity or end, and a annuity due or begin. All right, uh, lots more tricks in this chapter for uh, multiple cash flow. See you next video.